Hello, Teresa back again. Today we're going to be working from natural form again. We're going to be doing a short project for our lockdown um, projects. And today we're going to be working from a leaf. Now I think this could be a sycamore leaf, but I'm not too sure. I've got several at the same time that I got the ivy. So it's beginning to crinkle up a bit. I've actually ironed this, left a lovely mark on the iron, which I'll have to clean. But that has been ironed because it got so crinkly that it started to crumble, as you can see there, with that hole. That hole wasn't there when I picked it up. So this is our inspiration for design. What we're going to do, be doing is one single leaf in slow stitch and other stitches that we can use as slow stitch so I'm just going to pop that on the side now here I've got two examples here of how to break down a leaf for design this is canvas work um, unfortunately it's under glass and it's looking particularly fancy and lovely in this frame because this is how it was presented in a, an exhibition um, I'm hoping that the light won't if I pick that up a little bit yeah I've even closed the wind the uh, curtains to give a little bit of light uh, darkness I mean but I think that might be the best we can get it looks as if you can see my other embroidery is on the wall reflected in there but anyway I quickly go through this one this one as I said is um, canvas embroidery so obviously the background is stiff canvas it's 12 count which means there are 12 squares or holes to the inch so it's quite a nice canvas to work on that suits me anything finer is too small um, at one time I could have done it but well you know what it's like getting older <laughs> unfortunately the old eyesight's not as good as it used to be so I've incorporated a plique velvet here a plique there and an applique an applied background half in fel um, sorry velvet and the other half in a pure wool now this is the contrast the design principle of contrast we have the nice soft raised uh, uh, velvet effect against the flat um, that is slightly textured and it's just slightly rough it's it's uh, more so it's not as smooth as this one so that is the contrast here they're both green although they're looking brown on the screen but they are both green contrasting greens the dark green against the lighter green now the stitches these are predominantly canvas stitches there's Algerian eye long and short stitches brick stitch um, we have tent stitch um, what else satin there's a little bit of satin stitch there and I think or tent stitch I think that could be it all so there's numerous stitches here which I'm not really bothered about at the moment we're, we're not actually going to be doing these stitches but I just wanted to show you how to break up a leaf if you can see we have a distinct line here and here here for the big veins and then within that section it's broken down further into smaller parts and this is what we're going to be doing with our leaf when I bring it up again so that is one way of breaking the leaf up this is another piece which again is, has been mounted for exhibition and um, that's why it's a little bit tatty round here some of the lacing at the back um, it started to loosen up a little bit I can't show you the lacing because I act I've actually stuck some workings out some design workings out on the back but underneath this is the lacing and um, it's there's too much give there so when you do lace work remember to pull it tightly as tight as you can without actually breaking the thread but this is gold work can I lift that up a little bit that's gold work 
on furnishing fabric it's furnishing fabric well they all are this is dress fabric satin from a dress fabric now if I can like lay that gently so we don't really want to concern ourselves with the stitches um, at the moment because we're not doing this this is another technique completely all I want you to see once again is how the leaf the same leaf that was used for the previous example how this has been broken up see the center vein there and then we have the vein here and distinct areas here and here now it's you'll have to forgive me if I'm not using the, the right terminology I am assuming that's a vein and these are veins um, but I'm more concerned with the design aspects than the terminology I'm afraid so, so there we go now we're going to do the same oh, I do hope that's come out on the screen we are going to look at this leaf now and if you, those of you who did the ivy, the lockdown ivy one, will know how we started this. That's better. We're going to start this in the same way by literally drawing around it. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is very qu quickly draw around it. Now, you don't need to go in here if you, I mean, by all means, it's your work if that's what you want to do, but I'm going to simplify it. I just want the basic shape which is round here I do like to round everything off although this isn't round so I shouldn't really be doing that but we make our own rules up nobody should be watching this thinking I can't do that I can't do that unless you think it's very boring but everybody can do this so if you have never in your life picked up a pencil and done this picked up a sewing needle believe me you can do it um, somebody this morning gave me feedback on one of my videos and said that she didn't know she could do anything like this and um, she was very very nervous of starting it she didn't know she could do it and she's absolutely tickled pink for herself because she's achieved something she didn't think she could do and I think oh my goodness it's so wonderful that's what it's all about having fun maybe learning a process or two along the way but mostly having fun and finding something that's going to get you through this bloody awful time that we're all going through this loneliest time I've ever known in my life and that can that includes an awful divorce and thinking that I was losing my head then but this is something else so special message to all you people who are on your own I know how you feel because I'm on my own as well um, but chin up apparently there is light at the end of the tunnel now and we should be coming out of this very very soon um, I find sitting in the garden I've, I'm on the London bus route it's a rural London bus route but the bus goes through every 20 minutes uh, to every 20 minutes in either direction and I just find sitting there um, in the front garden I must look really sad but the amount of people who go past and obviously think I'm sad because they say they call out you all right and I begin to feel really, really old, <laughs> like I'm 90 or 100. And I have this wonderful nephew as well. And he, bless him, I love him to death. He's making me feel like I'm 110. But, you know, I, sh I shall pay him back after this is all over. Anyway, that was just a message to all you people who are alone. I know how you feel and for me to get absorbed in a nice book about an, a famous artist or to do some cooking or do this it's a real pleasure you can lose yourself now having said that we're now going to carry on so pencils raised now as you can see or not see occasionally I, I look up to the screen which is to the left of me 
and my glasses are a bit dodgy and I can't see any marks up there but not to worry so now we're going to just go around here very much like we did the ivy now don't forget oh I, I've rounded that off because I like curved shapes but as you saw that the leaf wasn't round but as I said we are the designers of our own work so it doesn't have to be naturalistic it's just how we want them now at this point right at this point you can exaggerate or eliminate your design you might think oh there's an awful lot of work to do there you know what I don't want that bit pointing out there so I'm going to eliminate that now this is a design principle exaggerate and eliminate I don't want that piece um, I don't want this piece either so I'm going to get rid of that there you go eliminate um, yeah I'm not sure about having the rounded shape like that I've curved that in too much So, yeah, I think I'm going to leave that now as it is. But eliminate that and eliminate that. Now, that's the elimination. You might now want to exaggerate part of it. You might think, oh, I like that little bit there. So what I might do is actually make that bigger. There, I've made that bigger, so I've exaggerated that. Um, anything else I want to exaggerate this piece here as well I like this pit piece here I'm going to make that bigger too so exaggerate now you have the nice big one two nice big points there or parts of the leaf there against the smaller pieces here so large against small two more elements so, I'm going to cut this out. Now you'll see the ivy designers, the lockdown ivy designers, will start to see that, oh, she's doing it different this time. There is no tracing paper involved. Um, oh, hang on, that's a, no, no tracing paper involved in this. Now, that stalk there, or stem, or whatever, I'm going to just leave it there loosely just to remind me something should go there but that is very long so I might eliminate some of that around here it's not quite fussy cutting but as good as right around there it lovely right we're going to get the leaf back now this is purely for reference this piece so get your leaf back and now you can see how the veins fan out think umbrella at this point and you see how the veins fan out so up there oh very lightly oh this is a rough old pencil and there there and where does that one go that one goes there okay so we're going to take that along there up there here there and there now we've done this for reference all we need to notice now is that there are these are areas on the leaf are broken up further all right but we, we will need to remember that maybe or maybe not it depends on your style you are now those of you who have been with me from day one uh, which is quite a while ago now you all have started 
uh, developing your own style which is great and I love that that is really great so you might think no I'm not doing it our Teresa's doing it I'm going to use that as inspiration but I'm going to do each one like this in one big swoop you might do that you might do it as I did on the examples here you might decide to do it like this where I broke each section up into smaller bits you might want to do the same break it all up into smaller bits but whatever you do it's entirely up to you and you cannot do it wrong whatever you do is not wrong because it's your inspiration and it's your progression of an idea so nobody can argue with your idea because it's yours it's personal it's about you so you can't get that wrong technique we'll come to the technique but you'll all you should all be um au fait shall we say mm, new words there we should all be au fait and if my french friends <laughs> think I've pronounced that wrong please don't tell me let me live in this little bubble that I can speak French and I know I can't so anyway I forgot where I was so we're going to move on now anyway reference now ref no this isn't reference sorry we're using that this is now reference and that poor little thing is only going to last for an hour or two before it crinkles up right the next thing we're going to do is a fabric now I have three layers of fabric as as always this is the back the calico now I've ironed some iron-on violin on to the calico now the reason I didn't iron the iron-on calico onto the front is because I'm using sacking a loosely woven sacking which would be lovely to work on and as you can see it's printed it's actually a Christmas sack it's printed and hopefully I am hoping that ah yes I can see it on the screen clearly it's, it's funny enough it's clearer on the screen than it is in front of me I want this the printing to show through on the background I'm not using fur, uh, furnishing fabric or dress fabric this time I'm using the sacking and I love the front but it's it's glares too much it's too bright and it would swamp our design but it's muted using it this way it's just muted but it's still there now I have already attached these pinned them and I've sewn them down oops one pin there now it's no good me giving you the sizes because your leaf or your natural form might be different you see mine sits on there I want it to sit right on the three so what you need to do is when you get your say you get your leaf you, you're going to do the same you might use a leaf you might use something else just make sure you have a nice border around here now the border is to allow you later on to either frame your work or to sew it into something else so that gives you a nice seam allowance all the way around or it gives you a nice border for turning under and lacing on a frame on a piece of wood or a strong card lacing it at the back to give you a picture so I can't give you the the measurements of this because yours will be different now I'm just going to show you all I've done with this to attach them as I explained I've I've so um, not sewn I've ironed the iron on violin and it's a very fine one it's not a heavy violin because the calico is heavy enough but I just need this just need that 
to be a little bit firm because this is a loose weave it's an open weave so there isn't much firmness to it so it just needs a little bit of help to give it that firmness while you work there it is look you see how firm that is I'm not so loose that is I think I'm thirsty right you can see that it's very loose in fact if I hold it up look you can see through it and all I'm going to do is sandwich the violin in there I want to turn that over now on this big piece I pinned pinned all the way around so imagine this is a really big piece you're going to pin it all the way around to keep it steady one more pin here and then just tack it in place and that if I show you the back there look there's the back do it this way and then you can see what I'm doing nice big long stitches is that better nice big long stitches all the way around I'm not going to do it all the way around because you get the idea and it doesn't matter how scruffy this is because it's going to come out eventually the idea is that you're just securing the layers of fabric together so that whoops that is what you would do all the way round so I'm calling that a day there because I don't I want this to be a, another short video I don't want it to take too long now this is to be pinned where you want it you might want yours at a slant you decide how you want to place your natural form your leaf um i think i like mine like that pin it now can you see what's missing from the ivy lockdown project it's the tracing paper bit we haven't done this in tracing paper because we don't need to the tracing paper was used to mark the the what was it the veins wasn't it but we don't need to do that on here so that is now in place And what we are going to do, I'm going to take this out to save me re-threading. We will now tack all the way around the shape. I'll move that up there. I think I'm just getting the hang of this, this new camera. It's not so much a new camera, it's a camera stand that's new. Right, I'm going to start there. And tack nice big tacking stitches all the way round the shape so I won't sit and do this on the camera all the way round because you all know how to tack now or baste some of you will still be calling it basting and rightly too if that's your the word you use and I'm going to do that nice big tacking stitches please don't worry about being neat about having long ones and short ones and scruffy ones and fat ones and wonky ones because no one's going to see this but you and not only that these are coming out some people would actually draw this on but um, that's a bit risky because sometimes the pen, the inks will bleed and if you've ruined your fabric. Other times the pen, pencil isn't strong enough so you'll, take, you'll spend a lot of time drawing around it, take your design off, your leaf off and you won't have a single mark there. So this I think is the best way for me you might have another way those of you who did the ivy one or who've done other pieces might have discovered another way and if you have please let us know and we can all we can all share it 
so I'm going to carry on right can you see that it's actually showing better on the back than the front <laughs> looks quite nice on the back so I'm going to carry on for the next couple of minutes and then I'll get back to you okay this is the first segment that I've completed um, as you can see I have done the outline of the leaf all the way round all in running stitch slow stitch um, I've divided up the areas into segments so we have one two three four five six areas here and this one I have completed now I've done this with rows and rows and rows of running stitch now we all know what running stitch is now but just in case you don't I'm just very very quickly going to show you in not in from the back through all the the layers and this is all you do in and out all the way around in and out and that is slow stitch running stitch there you are as easy as that you can vary your stitch length um, some of you will have this because we made this during the introductory course right or going back um, maybe last July so some of you will have this and you can vary the length if you want the contrast the regular if you like evenly spaced even length or combine it with short and long or all short against long it's entirely up to you so as I say that's as far as I've got now and what I did because I'm using hessian I need a large needle so I have a large I'll take that out now large needle with a nice wide eye and a point need the point to go through the calico which is quite tough so a blunt end needle wouldn't go through there if you see that wouldn't go through at all so that's a nice needle particularly for hessian as well and I've used the thread the floss six strands I haven't actually stranded it at all in this the six strands to make the one up the one thread um, it needs to be thick if you're using a fabric like I am it needs to be thick so it can be seen and so it won't get lost between the open weave now you might decide to use a satin or a nice finer fabric in that case don't use the six strands the six strands will be too will be too thick and you might find that you need something like three two or three strands um, I've used different colors I'd like to keep this really colorful now I'm not sure whether I am going to do little blocks because I don't know how it will work on such a loose open open fabric I don't think it will so I will probably stick to slow stitching on all this I'm not sure yet as you know it is um, a work in progress it is the progression of an idea so as I move on it's likely to change but I will keep bringing it back to show you how it's going on this particular color hessian I need strong dark colors or strong colors anyway so I did all the bright colors that you can see all the colors you can see except the brown the brown is to marry it all together so I've used as many bright different colors as I can and then I went back and I filled in all the little gaps with rows of brown but I didn't use that six strands I used three so it just nestles in nicely in any gaps and it gives it an overall color it blends all those bright colors together it um, just gives it a nice brown look and um, as I say I think it marries marries them together so that's as far as I've got at the moment I'm going to carry on 
and I'll update you shortly. Several hours later and I'm back to show you what I've done. I've actually now filled in the whole of the, the leaf shape as you can see all the way around here. Um, it's pretty obvious looking here where the veins are. Um, I'm now looking on the screen and it looks very pale on the screen. Um, in real life, looking at it now, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot more. Or, or it's a lot deeper in colour, I should say. So um, yeah, it's still looking okay up there, but not as good as it does in front of me. So the next thing to do is to decide how I'm going to fill in these a few little gaps around about, like down here. Now this segment here as I showed you earlier on I filled it all in with a finer thread so I think that is possibly the only option open to me here. I might try incorporating another stitch. This is all slow stitch, it's all running stitch with no other stitches at all. I quite fancy putting a herringbone stitch in this somewhere but I might do it around the edge just to give the shape more definition. Now to stop this being a distraction so you can actually see the leaf shape this often makes it clearer. If you pop a frame around your work it often sort of highlights the actual shape you're working on and it gives you a rough idea of the negative spaces in the background so by popping that the frame on here I can now see the areas that I want to work on and I do indeed want to work on some of these but I won't take it right to the end of the fabric because I don't think there's any need this is actually a nice size so I'm going to stick to that size you see the difference when I lift the frame I actually like this as well and it's a bit of a shame to cover that up but how does that no it still shows doesn't it so you're still getting the background of the sack or the hessian showing through now I don't know whether to actually outline it in black threads I don't know whether it needs that sort of definition but it always reminds me of um, teaching children art when after they've just left primary school. Oh, it was a nightmare to teach the first year, year seven, or yeah, year seven, isn't it? When they've just left primary school and they're starting secondary education because they, at one time, they were all arriving into class fresh from primary school, and for some reason they would put a black crayon outline around every piece of artwork thick wax crayon and it was a habit that had to be broken but and it reminds me a little bit of outlining work in black thread <laughs> it takes me back to those oh please class please no more black in fact at one time <laughs> being the menial teacher I hit <laughs> the wax crayons those big chunky ones I actually hid them I think I put them on top of a cupboard and I thought oh these little four feet peak, four foot high people aren't going to get them and they didn't they didn't but um so they <laughs> they felt most uncomfortable not outlining their work with black I do hope I didn't cause much damage or any damage to them but that is what it, this reminds me of do I want to outline it in black or don't I? Oh, big decision. It's really late now. It's just approaching midnight, so I've um, got a dry throat as well. So I think I might rest this now until the morning and have a think about it in the morning and decide then what to do. So for now, I'm off to watch The Big Bang Theory. Love that. I know it's finished, but... I still can't see enough of it and um, I'll get back to you later and it's not going to be very long for you so I will get back to you later and uh, we'll see what I've decided 
okay then so take care until for you 10 seconds for me probably eight nine hours or so <laughs> so i will see you shortly and here is the finished piece it did take quite a while to do actually it wasn't a quick process but i think it's looking really good and the thing i like as well is that this has come out really well and the lettering underneath i like that very much now although i joked um a little while ago about the children and their black outlining i've actually done exactly the same if you can see here all the way around the edge i've picked out the edge here just to give it a definition because there didn't seem to be a distinct line between the stitch in here even though the outside is pink um the definition just wasn't there <clears throat> it did need a darker color it's actually not black it's navy blue but it looks like black so i picked it up all the way around here with the running stitch and each of the veins I've gone side by side with the marker, if you like, um, the marker colour that denotes the veins. I've run the black at the edge here, all the way around there, and then picked out the stem or the stalk here. Um, and just to take the plainness off the background, I've also added a couple of lines here broken lines they don't go all the way around they are broken they don't meet up all the way around three lines here yes three lines all the way around in green and the green i think here if you can see it picks out the nice green of the leaf so that's the close-up you can just about pick out the green around here the colors are far um, more bright they're brighter um i'm looking at the camera and getting a bit distracted yeah the the colors are brighter here than they are on the screen but you can see the nice shapes here and the, the colors um and i think this has worked really well on the hessian background so just to give it a little bit so you can see it a little bit better as i said sometimes it does help to pop a frame around it and then you can it cuts out all the unnecessary bits that you don't want to see this frames fractionally a little bit small because it isn't fitting in the broken lines here some tack in there that needs to come out so that is the finished piece and i hope you like that so that's the whole process from design picking up the leaf uh, the progression of the idea through to the end now I thought while I was doing it and I have stretched this as well stretched it don't stretched it um I thought well you know what that would make a nice nice um placemat so just to show you with the plate on there and I quickly took it away because I thought no I am not putting anything on my stitching when it's taken so long to do that it actually looks quite nice well i think it looks very nice so as i say i hope you enjoyed that if you do please give it a thumbs up where's my thumbs thumbs up for a like and um i hope you have a look at the rest of my um videos as well some of them aren't quite in this way especially the ones taken from uh, van gogh and picasso they're in a different style and there are some uh, videos there for journal covers so anyway until we see i see you again we meet again should i say thank you for your lovely comments um i'm still receiving them on previous um pieces and uh, i'd like to mention you all by name but there are several of you but thank you very very much and i have replied to every one of you so thanks a lot for that and good luck with this awful time um it's not going to last forever and there is a light at the end of the tunnel so take care and i see you very soon